So we had a few requests this morning. Um, hmm. And even the song just played, you know, this, this vibe that, that I was getting from the song. The concept of the flower of life, some people may know what that is and some others may not. But, uh, and so, so we're not going to go into a talk on that. But I'm just wanting to share that, you know, when we're on the spiritual path, I mean, I, I often have asked people, do you remember when you got on the spiritual path? You know, and people typically, you know, yes. Do you remember it, what got you on the path? Was it a friend let you a book? Or did you have a near-death experience? Or just it made sense and you just did it? You know, and typically people will say, yeah, I remember. And there's pivotal moments in our lives. But I always say, but technically, we were always on the spiritual path. Because, because you have a spirit or soul, because you have a spirit, any path you walk would be a spiritual path. So really what it comes down to is, on my spiritual path, am I learning the easy way or the hard way? But you're always on the spiritual path. I'm not telling you that hurtful behaviors was spiritual. I'm just saying you were there. It was always a spiritual path. And the more we block, deny, push away love, peace, happiness, um, then we're learning the hard way. But you're never not on the spiritual path. And this is important because we can, we can tell our children, and people often do, you know, or partners, if only you were on the path. And you see, but you were wrong all along. They were, and they are on the spiritual path. It's impossible for them to not be on the spiritual path. <sighs> so yes, you, you, you know, technically it would be nice for you to go back and apologize. I mean, it, you know, if you can afford that in here. Uh, hey, listen, you know, and even if they're passed on, hey, listen, um, or, you know, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, my bad. I was kind of assuming you were not on the spiritual path and so on, you know, and, and I, you, you can say delicately, it's called bridging. You can say gently, delicately, tactfully. You know, a funny thing happened. Um, I had this insight that I, I sometimes say, you know, I wish you were on the path and so on and so on and so on. But you know what, honey? I was wrong. You know, I was mistaken. I, you are on the path. I guess what I meant to say was I wish you were on my path. <laughs> That's true. There's an egotist inside of me that wished you were on my path. But, um, but you are on the path, and it's OK. I, I'll be honest, though, honey, and tell you I, I was partly well-intended there because sometimes it looks like you're struggling. So that's why I was wishing you were on the path. But we all struggle. So even that wasn't going to protect you from your struggles. You know, just you say things more tactfully. And um, there are obviously lots of variations of the spiritual path. And people will say, you know, which one is the right one? Well, technically, I think it's smarter, wiser to say it feels like they're all. They've all got something going with, for them. And they also get twisted. You know, so that happens. But, uh, but there's a spiritual path, and it's, the, it's how sincere you are determines what's going to happen on your spiritual path. The sincerity, the clarity, the, you know, the, the true vibe inside. Because there are people that obviously pretend to be on the spiritual path, and they're not at all. You know, they, they speak it and so on. But there's a distinction between the religious path, let's be clear about that, and the spiritual path. It's a very, very clear distinction. But one of them is more like, just ceremony obligation, you know, oh, it's Sunday, I have to go to church, one of those kinds of things. Or I'm this religion, so we don't do this or that. Well, you probably don't follow any of the other principles. Why throw that one in there? <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't just, it's called convenient religion, you know. I pick and choose what I like, you know, I can get away with it or whatever. Spirituality doesn't give you that kind of leeway. So even religion allows a little bit of horizontal movement. When you're in, on the spiritual path, hypocrisy doesn't really work very well. Because if you're on the religious path, even the religion, now there's other paths, political path, you know? I mean, that's a path. So I'm not saying that's a spiritual path. I'm saying there are different paths in life. And some people are, you know, a grouping of politics, academics, and so on. But at the end of the day, a spiritual path is the one that's vertical. Even religious paths and everything else are horizontal. That means I'm choosing a little of this religion, now I'm not. I'm choosing this politic and this, now I'm not. Everything just moves around horizontally. 
This is the sleeping world. This is the delusional world. This is the illusionary world, etc. And everybody's doing things on it. And they actually think they're getting somewhere. Oh, look, I got married. Horizontal. Oh, look, I had kids. Horizontal. Oh, look, I'm not married. Horizontal. Oh, I'm in a new religion. It's all, this world is just horizontal, which is a good metaphor for asleep. When we wake up, something happens and boom. You know, it's like when you have a middle of the night inspiration, boom, it's like you have an awakening. And that's what it's like to get on the spiritual path. But even on the spiritual path, there's hypocrisy, of course, because there's humans. But there's less allowed hypocrisy because if you're on any kind of horizontal path, you're going to find that um, you can still do naughty things and you're going to be living karma. And with the karma will come reincarnation. You can even be a fundamentalist of some religion, not believe in reincarnation. doesn't matter. You're coming back. <laughs> you know, you're going to feel a rude awakening, but you know, you're serious? I didn't know that existed. Well, we have another alternative, hell. You know, um, if you want to believe in hell enough, we have a beautiful center you can go and hang out in. Um, and then eventually you're going to go, can I just reincarnate? Yes. And then you go and reincarnate. But this, this is part of the illusion. We, we make mistakes and we have to get them cleared. But the spiritual path, one of the seemingly unfair pieces to the spiritual path is it, everything becomes now. So you're not given as much room to mess around. It's not like they can say, you know, you did some really hurtful things, but you know, a few lifetimes from now, and you go, oh, okay, long payment plan. <laughs> Spirituality means now. Whatever we do, we tend to pay for fairly quickly. And I remember that as a kid going, Why does it, what's, what's up with this? Friends all do all kinds of things. If I do anything, I get caught. <laughs> and one day, you know, it was, the voice was clear. It's called instant karma. And instant karma is to keep you debt free. Debt free means you don't have to come back and pay debts. So you don't have to reincarnate. And there's lots of people um, on YouTube, Facebook groups that are watching us here live uh, and online. You know, and they're saying things like, I don't want to come back. Oh, that'll help. <laughs> you know, but, okay, I wish I had your bank account. Let's see what happened, you know. Uh, it doesn't, it's not like you just get things you want like that. You, you don't, you have to change the consciousness. You want to be prosperous. You don't take somebody's bank account. You develop that level of consciousness. And if it's a wealthy one, let's say. And it's the same with uh, instant karma. You, you know, I don't want to come back. I'm tired of this world. And being tired of this world doesn't mean you don't come back. People have ailments they're tired of, tired of. And they still have the ailment. So you, you can't wish yourself into a different reality. You have to become the different reality. And that, unfortunately, for some, it's work. You have to you know, be responsible. You have to show up. You've got to do your, your step work and whatever kind of work on your spiritual path. So religion told us if we just become part of the religion, we don't have to do the work. We just get you know, sort of escorted to a higher level of consciousness. Uh, the you know, new millennium, uh, the ascension, or whatever other traditional terms you want to use for it. But it just doesn't work that way. It, we have to become these things. One of, the, uh, one of the tricky ones that I see, one of you asked us to talk about joy, and, and there's other terms you guys used, but these concepts like peace and joy, we just talked about happiness a week or two ago, and all about that. People want peace. They want happiness. They want joy. They want one, you know, oneness, love, whatever it happens to be. These are things we have to become. You know, they, they don't just happen. So imagine, for example, this idea, walking in peace. What does it mean? Well, there's karma and there's walking in peace. There's judgment, there's walking in peace. There's war, there's walking in peace. So that's a huge part of what we have to understand. And it's not an easy concept. Because some people actually think to walk in peace, you, um, you only talk in a whisper. You only wear white. You know, and, uh, you know, it's like, wow, patchouli in your hair. You know, <laughs> you got to look stoned. Hey, man, I'm totally at peace. How about you? You know, it's, that's, not, that's not how you can't 
impose peace to the world, bring peace to the world. You can't do it with any external means. It's not what color you wear. It's not whatever else you're doing out here. It's, it's an effect, just as happiness is an effect. You plug in to your divinity and you start walking in peace as a natural effect. But this is going to get tricky. I can see that already. There's a couple of things about that that we're going to cover before we're done. But a lot of people think that walking in peace means you're this kind of always soft and or naive type of person. Many of you have said this to me. Many of you have said, Michael, what's this? You know, uh, um, I'm afraid to, you, you use the word, we have to discover our innocence. Well, I don't know about that because when I was innocent or whenever I'm innocent, I tend to get hurt by people. That's not the real innocence. That's innocence and vulnerable. That's a vulnerable innocence. You can say, I walk in peace, but people take advantage. There's a difference, which we'll get to in a sec. Walking in peace, in love, in oneness, in bliss is actually such a, a radiant state of being no harm can come to you. It's, it's a strength, not a weakness. To be innocent, well, take an innocent six-month-year-old child, put it out in the woods, forest, whatever. How long is it going to survive? It, its innocence didn't help it, did it? That's human innocence. Your spiritual, real, true innocence, your true self cannot be harmed by anything. It can't be. So your human form can die, yet this other doesn't. And the more we identify with that one, there's a frequency you set out there. You put this vibe out there. The bad news is that when you do that on Earth, there are some very intense predators that love to look at that light and go after it. Why? Because they don't have it. You have something I want. Now, if you think that it is your physical, anatomical, biological innocence, they hit you, they strike you. Now you're physically, you've been attacked. You lost sight of who you really are. In the reality of it, no one can touch me. The reality of it. So this becomes this majorly complicated, contradictory conversation because when we endorse this idea, walk in peace, it means everybody takes advantage. So how do you do this? It, it's, it's an inside job. I remember Jesus talking in, in his notes to the woman who channeled the Course in Miracles. He, he talked about how even governments try to have peace talks. And yet they're still including conversations about arms and bombs. You know, peace talks about ammunition. So he was saying to them, you know, it's, it's very tricky. What are you going to say? Uh, you know, listen, we're going to announce now, we're a certain country, we're going to announce to the rest of the world, we're, we're going to eliminate all arms. What would happen? Do you think other nations are going to go, why didn't we think of that? <laughs> we're now going to respect Namaste, your country. And, and we're not going to do anything aggressive ever. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's that complicated. Because if one of you suddenly was thrust into power, you know, as a president or whatever else they have on this planet, uh, you would have that complicated question and answer. Do we, do, we, do we play out the innocence? Do we really go that far? Can we say we're a country that's going to walk in peace? And could you live it? The first time they attack, you know what's going to happen. People are going to say, why did you give up our arms? We need it now. You know, that's this world. So I don't think you're going to have as easy a time convincing other people how to walk in peace as it would be to do it yourself. Just to walk in peace. Um, this is a very, very advanced concept. So I'm going to try to finish it soon and move on to simpler things. And I'm not judging in, in any way your minds. I'm saying. This planet has a really hard time understanding this. So here it goes. When I walk in peace, a peace pilgrim actually was big on this too, this woman. But when I walk in peace, I set out a frequency that cannot attract aggression. I'm innocent. I am, my greatest defense is my state of mind. It's not preparing for attack from others. 
The more I walk in a state of peaceful mind, there's no frequencies that are attracted to it because I'm just holding this tone. It's this vibration. Now, again, this is very challenging because it's almost impossible for a human being to understand this. But what happens is when people attack you, they're sensing your false innocence, naivete. They're sensing aggressions in you. It's like Yogananda said, if people really understood this, he said, a mosquito would not even bite you. The only reason even a mosquito can bite you is because it senses something there that's off, that's aggressive. You see what I'm saying? A dog attacks because it senses a threat. Well, why would it sense a threat? I'm very nice. My God, look at me. I'm like St. Francis. I go in my backyard. Hello, birds. I feed them, you know, my food that I could have eaten. But it's good because I'm no carbs for me. Here, you can have my carbs. Bread, you know, give the bird, feed the birds, wear an Audubon Society shirt. Or you can look all and be all St. francis -y. And yet, you know, you walk by some shrub and then there's this, you know, and some snake bites you. Why would you do that? It goes, because I'm a snake. This is what we do. If I had nothing that felt threatening to the snake, it probably wouldn't have bit. It's not like snakes are actually just sitting around going, only I had somebody to bite. Uh, <laughs> nothing to do today. Oh, look, a person. Sneak up on you. Boom. <laughs> That's not how these things work. It feels threatened. So now, can you, can you agree with some of that, most of that? So then if it's true with animals, how is it not true with the animal and a person? Someone threatens, it feels a threat from you. Their threatening feeling could even be your beauty. And they have to attack. Gossip, you know, verbal attack, physical attack, you know, abuses, childhood to adulthood. This doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. All I'm saying is, the book of Revelation describes a day when the lion can lie with the lamb. In a continent long ago called Lemuria, they didn't even have species that would bite and attack people, especially because people were more etheric for a great part of that era. But anyway, the point is, the lion will lie down with the lamb. Why wouldn't it attack it? Doesn't it need to eat? We only need to eat and devour each other because we're off. There's something in us, there's a hole inside. And I need to fill it by taking from you, your light, your innocence, your creativity, whatever it happens to be, your, your nation or your money. Such a strange way of thinking. But that's going to pass. And that statement, that concept, the lion lies with the lamb, means there's a point where in me there will be no more conflict. I already, just as I stand here, I have a right and a left brain. I have two hemispheres. They're trying to get along, but they don't know why is there a right and a left? Why am I a male or a female? The day is going to come. No color, no gender, no right, left, no up, down. That is, to a degree, that's what some people are sensing is happening energetically, and they're interpreting that to be their gender type. But what they're really sensing is there's a change. You're not a gender, and they're going, oh, okay. <laughs> and they go along with it. But they're not understanding it's talking about in here. It's not the outside adjustments we need to make. It's the internal, obviously, the inside adjustments we need to make. Because the world's calling for this. So, you know, we can walk the spiritual path. We can say, oh, I walk in peace. I even have a shirt, walk in peace. Um, but I cheat on my partner. Take it off. You know, I, see, that's hypocrisy. And some people get really weird about when I use that word, hypocrisy. OK, call it contradiction, because that's what we mean by hypocrisy. You're saying one thing, you're doing another. You're, 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 you're claiming, I want this vibe, I want to walk in peace, man. I just want to live on the land and so on. But in us, there's a belief that we're separate from God, which means we send out a frequency that we're flawed. If you walk in peace, you have to walk in innocence. And if you walk in innocence, you can't be promoting guilt and shame while innocent. 
So the person says, I want to walk in peace, whether it's in my yard, amongst the critters, or it's amongst people. I want to walk in peace. Okay, if you want to walk in peace, you have to walk in your state of innocence. Well, what do you mean by innocence? See, you're already off. Because you think innocence means naive, and I'm asking you to be ultra vulnerable to hurts of the world. I'm talking about being so plugged in, you don't invest in stuff. Things might still happen, but you just let it roll off because it does not affect who I am. It doesn't mean things don't happen. Flat tire. But it's like, oh, I wonder where this is leading us. This is great. Let's see what happens. Do, do, do I believe we always roll with things like that? No, I don't. But we do our best. We need to do our best. So if you want to walk in peace, you have to walk in innocence. And if you want to walk in innocence, the opposite of innocent is guilt. Guilty, right? If you walk with guilt, you're not walking with innocence, therefore you're not walking at peace. So those who we can say, you know, walking in peace can, you know, uh, if you're really in the zone, it's true, you'll not attract as much aggressive stuff. I remember one time there was this uh, uh, very, very macho celebrity kind of guy, and, um, and he was sitting at a bar with his friends. This is back in the 60s, 70s. He was sitting in a bar with his friends, and they were filming, and he had some of the stuntmen, and they were all kind of hanging out. And um, in comes a troublemaker, and he, he's wanting to start a fight. And they could just tell. It's like, oh, here's one of those kinds. Of, you know, and he's just intense and aggressive. And he's, you know, coming at them in their direction. Now the star says, he's coming my way. I'm going to take care of this guy. Because he thinks, because I'm the star, they're coming to me. One of the stuntmen goes, oh, no, he's coming for me. How do you know? Because this guy knew this is his vibe. He's always fighting. He's all, how could this guy who comes into a bar, he's been drinking now, how could you predict which one of these guys in, the, in this crowd are going to be his target? The guy who carries the most aggression knew he was going to attract aggressiveness. You see what I'm saying there? There's a study that was done in the 80s, 90s, where this is a really bizarre one. But um, there's all these inmates in a prison that had done different crimes, uh, uh, theft, uh, whether burglary, uh, physical offenses, whatever it happened to be. And they were asked to stay in the upper um, balcony of the prison and observe people, civilians from outside, who were going to go and have lunch and just hang out down in the lower area. And they said, just you know, observe and make notes and see what, see what you think. You know? And so the civilians are down there doing their things. The inmates are doing their thing. They interviewed the inmates later. Did, did anybody down there draw your attention? You know, yeah, that, that one woman over there and that one man, you know, different, right? Different responses from each of them. Do you know that when they checked all this out, the vast majority of the time, the people that were being observed had suffered from crimes that the inmates did. So the inmates were attracted to the people that had suffered from their kinds of violations. So either you had coincidentally a hugely psychic prison, or it tells us people know. They, they can sense you have an issue that attracts me and I'm a mugger. You have an issue that attracts me and I'm a purse thief, snatcher, or whatever. It matched. Now, that could be really like aha wow to you in a positive way, or that could disturb you. Doesn't matter, it happened. People can see it. They can see you coming from a mile away. On an unconscious level, everybody has this subconscious self. It's not just psychics. On an unconscious level, someone woke up this morning and decided they're going to come and find you. Sorry to say. Does that mean you deserved it? Sometimes, karma and whatever. But it's a frequency thing. If I have a tendency to be afraid of men, that vibe is there, and there are certain men that are going to go, ooh, I like you. That's what happens. It's just a frequency we hold. It's a vibe. Again, it doesn't make us bad. But here's going back to that walking in peace. I'm walking the world with a frequency. Every bit of the frequency that is not perfect holiness is going to attract 
not perfect holiness. And then we can go, well, forget it then. I mean, I know I can't walk with perfect holiness all the time. I might as well give a good, because that means all kinds of horrible things. No, it's going to be normal life. That's what happens every day. Why does the cop pull you over? Everybody else was speeding. Right? You know, it's like kind of funny. I remember one time on tour in the mid-90s. We're all, you know, flying up that one, you know, freeway they've got that goes the whole distance on the East Coast. And, you know, I'm following kind of a group of cars, and I'm, I'm on my way to a workshop. And um, we're all sailing. We're all going the same speed limit. And, uh, you know, 108. Um, <laughs> you know, but we're all going roughly the same. And just as we come over a hill, now, this is interesting. I'm just in my innocence, like, you're following the other cars. They're like, boom, boom, all aggressive, and I'm just moving with. And yet, we come over this hill, and this cop sees me follows me, pulls me over. And this is interesting because they're all speeding. Yeah, but, but they were smart enough to slow down when they saw him. I just continued. <laughs> you know, that's me in my naivete. You know, I, I actually think it's dishonest to put on the brakes. I swear. This is like my little brain. I'm like, well, I don't want to be dishonest. It's like, oh, no, I was only going 40. You know, I'm, I'm going to take it down a little bit. I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm speeding. And, you know, I, I don't want to do that. I mean, it's a weird thing to do. But, you know, I kind of continue on and oh, well, you see me, so, okay. So he pulls me over. This big guy walks over, to the, and, and I love it. It's a big African-American guy, and I love it. I love that. I love it. And he pulls me over, and he's going, so, <laughs> he's got this southern draw, the whole thing. So, got to be somewhere, huh? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just actually looking for the exit for the, you know, whatever, you know, and Oh, I see. And then he looks at my materials. Oh, can I look at that flyer? I go, sure. I see. So you're a counselor. You like to mess with people's minds, huh? <laughs> I'm like, well, I, I, in a matter of speaking, I, I guess. You know, like, where do I go? How do I bridge with this guy? Uh, <laughs> and uh, I mean, it just, it was bizarre. And, you know, and I, I just go along, answer the questions the best I can. So where do you look for? I'm looking for this particular exit. All right. He actually puts on his lights and has me follow him. He escorts me to my workshop. No ticket or anything like that. Something made him see me and pull me over. But something also made him let go and not write me up. Stuff is going to happen, but it can happen differently. I swear. It's miracle consciousness. You don't have to be in a hyper naive state of consciousness and have people abuse you all the time. I didn't say hyper vulnerable, hyper naive. It's just like it's okay. I've shared with you before. There's times when cops have pulled me over. You know, I, I don't get that a lot, but it, it happens once in a while. And they'll do that, you know, so if you want to fight this ticket, I'm, I'm always like, why, why would I fight it? Do you know how many times I've done this and didn't get caught? To me, this is just evening out the karma. You know, the cops are like, you know, this is where you're supposed to, you know, how dare you and, you know, trying to get your quota? You know, you cops, you're all the same. That's what they expect to hear. Be, do something different for them. You know, I almost always have shaken the hands that would get a ticket or when they let me go. I just let it be. Show something different to the world. Everybody's charged, man. Everybody's ready and on defense to spring to defense. Relax, find peace. And the finding peace doesn't mean you don't get a ticket. But I will say, you're going to go more and more in that direction where you don't attract things so much. And if they happen, you're going to have a different mindset about it. It's OK. I mean, the first time I got a ticket was shocking and terrible in a little, you know, a young guy. Man, I just went to work, had my first job, first payday. I just went to, the, to work to get my check. And as I was leaving, which would have been like a check for $150. And I left there, and I was so excited, I was speeding. The guy pulled me over, and my ticket was about 100 bucks. And I was sitting there almost crying because it was so contrary to what I was feeling that day. That guy is very different than the one today that might get pulled over. You see, it's like, oh, well, you know, we, we need to mature spiritually and know my 
reality isn't determined by you writing me up or not writing me up. But everything in life is seemingly a test of sorts. A test meaning the world, the universe is saying, how are you today? Triggered and alone. <laughs> okay, and so it is. And that's what you'll create, that's how you'll react. To confirm to everybody, well, the universe asks, so I'm just letting you all know. Triggered and alone. Angry, sad, lonely, whatever it happens to be. That's your frequency. But because you feel that already, on an unconscious level, you're already drawing that into your life. At least tests around it. And then when you react, you're either confirming it or denying it in a healthy way. When you react to it, you're confirming. I, I do feel lonely. For example, a friend of mine, let's say, is getting married. And, um, and I have an argument with them the week before. Maybe deep down inside, I'm angry that they're happily getting married and I do, I'm not. So it leaks out. But when it blew up into an argument, I should have caught on more quickly and bounced back. Okay? That's how we determine our spiritual growth. Are you catching yourself? Are you bouncing back? Are you, you know, adjusting? And gradually, the reactions don't even show up. You can catch them before they even manifest. How? By your feeling. I'm feeling a little ag agitated. How do I know? Because my friend said, oh, hi, I'm getting married. You know, and I was cooking and I just started noticing. I was slamming cupboards a little more than just, you know, normal, uh, you know, velocity. Um, <laughs> so you start to see things more quickly. And then I have nothing to offer in terms of reactions anymore because you caught it more quickly and you readjusted it. You dispersed it. That, that takes what's called responsibility. So ignorance is no escape from the law, as they say. Ignorance, us pretending we don't know, isn't going to help us. And that prison story, to me, that's mind-boggling. That these prisoners were naturally attracted to people who had been victims of their crimes that they committed. Why, guys? Because they can see them. There's a frequency. That, just that one story alone tells us everything we need to know about responsibility. Again, it doesn't mean those people, or you and I, are bad people. But it does mean there are certain frequencies in us. Okay? There's just certain vibes. We put it out there and it comes back one way or the other. So we heal. And we can heal uh, the easy way or the hard way. We can heal through long payment plan if you want to, you know, live in that kind of lifestyle. There are people, there are groups. See, if you're on the spiritual path, you're not given a lot of room this way, left and right. So you do something and it comes back fairly quickly, instant karma. Complain about it. That'll help. <laughs> you know what you can do? Lay down, go horizontal. And just say, I don't want to be awake. But once you wake up, you really can't get away with that either. But you can try. You can, I, I don't want to know anything about anything. There is an instant karma for politicians. They're on the long payment plan. You know, because they're not expected, by the way, to be of the highest integrity. We think that they're going to be. That world is deal making and weirdness, not for everybody, but all too often. You know, it's, it's so strange. And there's other horizontal uh, examples in this world, but. When we're navigating this world on a horizontal level, you, you can make payment plans for 100 more lifetimes. You can live a life where people just don't expect that much, which is a really weird way to, to imagine that. If people said to you, hi, yeah, I know, I've known you for 10 years. I don't expect much at all. I mean, that kind of feels weird. But that's the life humans live in. They like to hide to where they don't want to have any responsibility in karma, and they want to think, if I die and come back and not remember this, I don't have to hold myself responsible. But you're still coming back. So the opposite of walking in peace is walking in guilt and shame. Guilt from what? Guilt about judgments I have on myself or on you. I'm either walking in peace or I'm walking in guilt. When I'm walking in guilt, it's my judgments on you or myself that are setting the guilt vibration out there. When people see that guilt vibration, a cop pulls you over. Because why? Because you were guilty. See? Guilty. Or 
you know, partnership issues and being attacked for cheating when you're not cheating. Well, why, where's this coming from? There's just a vibe. They have their issues, the other people. But there's a vibe that they're sensing in you. Your vibe might not be that you did those naughty acts, but it could be that you're afraid of being judged when you didn't do anything. And so that could be the frequency you put out there. So walking in peace to me, it's, oh, I have no judgments left, you can say to yourself. I, I choose not to walk in the karmic effects of my judgments. Think about that line. Because when you're walking, you are your own little cause and effect universe. And if I'm not putting out judgments, there's no like or similar reactions. If I'm walking in, and, and the best way to know that you're walking in innocence, which creates walking in peace, is to say, God, you show me how to see myself and others. I want to see myself through your eyes. Not through my opinions, but through your eyes. And all of a sudden, you know, races and genders and whatever start falling away. And it's like, wow, look how similar that is to an infant. Right? Not just to judgments on others, because infants aren't sitting around, strollers and whatever else, you know, judging each other. Or, or themselves. Let, let me say this one thing. Not once in history, if you took a baby in a diaper and all, you took this baby, if that baby could live a thousand years as a baby, the way it is, 10,000 years, not once in its mind will it say, I got a little bit of cellulite on me. Not once. It will never notice its body. And yet it's the strangest thing because we're not infants, we're, we're adults. We're, we're maturing and we're intelligent. <laughs> we should be as intelligent as they are because as we grow older, oh my God, every little thing, you know, of the body becomes a thing to judge ourselves for. You know, my sister, you know, doesn't have this that I have and, you know, oh my God, you know, how did she end up better shape or my friend and friends at five years older and yet she doesn't look, all this stuff. And the baby's not sitting there doing that. It could live 10,000 years as a baby and then not once will it do that. We can't go 10 days, let alone 10,000 years. So we have judgments on others, but also on ourselves, our, what we call flaws. Now, you believe in cause and effect, so if I have judgments about myself and my flaws, do you understand that it's going to bring something? I'm not saying I consciously even know that I have these thoughts, but it's going to bring something my direction, whatever that happens to be. And it, and it, it is a hard thing, it, of course, you know, people, it feels hurtful. People are going to uh, say things, you know, you walk in the store and somebody giggles about the, what you, how you're dressed. But, you know, go infant for a moment. You, you don't notice or you don't care, right? Because of your true, your innocence. It's when I already judge myself as being too this, too that, not enough this, not enough that, that when somebody whispers, did you see them? I already go into that place of, oh, I bet they're talking about, you know, and whatever it happens to be. Now that's not walking in peace. So walking in peace is a, an effect of connecting with God. But instead of just saying connecting with God, I want to say of connecting with ourselves and others without a veil of guilt. Make sense? Innocence opposite of guilt. Just think of it that way. Guilty innocence, that, that phrase that we often hear. So <clears throat> the world is shifting at, at an incredible pace, and it looks like it's getting worse. People aren't going to take kindly to you walking in peace. They're wanting reactions. Uh, there was a guy um, just a few days ago, I saw uh, Judy had one of her estate sales, and I went uh, to volunteer, and uh, this guy walks up to me. So did you hear the news? And I'm like, that could be anything. I don't know. You know, uh, no. Sky is falling. I don't know. You know, whatever. And he goes, oh, yeah, it was announced. There's a plot. It was on the news last night. You didn't see it? No. You, you didn't see it? There's a plot. Did you know? The Republicans, he says. 
they're doing this and this and this. I say, I, I, I didn't see any of that. I, I don't watch the news. The guy was speech, like I could hear him like gasping, like, <laughs> you, you what? I, I've, I've never watched the news and I've never read a, a newspaper either. You know, and the dude's like, you know, this is a big one, Elizabeth. You know, he's doing like this, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> coming to join you, honey. Like, this guy looked like he was going to faint. I'm like, you, you know, you all right? I mean, I'm looking intently at his face, the, the strange reactions. And, and, and he goes, oh, all right, all right well, was, then let me tell you what's happening. I'm like, OK, go. You have 10 seconds, you know, and whatever he said, I don't know, don't care. And no offense to you, because you might care a lot about those things. But, you know, when he was done, when he was done, he, he, he didn't judge me for not being in that world of his. He said, you know, I understand. I, I, I do. I understand why that might not be of interest to you. I get it. So he responded to my not reacting to his reaction that I just held my center like it's not my thing. I didn't say, oh, that's bad. Why are you into it? I didn't judge him. Therefore, I didn't get judged. So this man who's really political, maybe for one of the only times in his life, let that identification go and could see me from a different place. So the world is changing dramatically. And it's going to send you these kinds of lessons and these kinds of oddities, you know, to, to test where you're at. Are you walking in peace or is it just an ohm symbol on your t-shirt? You walk, you know, have your mala beads, but you're stoned all the time. You have your t-shirt ohm symbol, but you cheat on your partner. All of these things are worth looking at. I'm not saying because you should shame and guilt yourself. I'm saying how much are you in alignment versus hypocritical? Now it gets very tricky because I want to live so in alignment, I try not to do anything that would be hypocritical. Now it's becoming a bit serious. It should really be fairly organic. I'm not interested in this. Not saying this, doing that, because that's duality. So instead, I'm saying this and I'm doing this. And sometimes I slip. And that's another way of saying it. And when I slip, I find that I don't end up spinning way out here I kind of right in here, a little out to the outside, and I tend to draw back again. That's probably the best definition of someone truly on the spiritual path. Just, <laughs> we're chanting. So just beautiful, right? You're allowed, it's okay, you're allowed to slip. One of the apostles says, you know, isn't it funny that the things that are unhealthy for me are the things I'm most attracted to? And the things I know I shouldn't engage in, you know, I, th those things I know I shouldn't, they draw me. I mean, I end up going that direction. But then there's things I know I should be interested in. And I, I don't do them. I refrain. That's a perfect definition of anybody in the healing path, recovery path. And that's a, what he said there is called responsible. He didn't shame himself. He said, isn't, you know, isn't that funny? And that's a good way to look at it. Because you know, and yet you slip. But when he said that, it's like a really responsible person in a 12-step program. I slip, and I keep my self-observation. So I know what I'm doing and why. And I know my weaknesses and flaws and foibles and you know tendencies. And I, I catch myself, and I come back. I don't catch myself, shame myself, force myself to be a certain way. That's being like a monk or a nun in the 1500s. Instead, oops, oh, wow, that was interesting. wonder what that was about. Mm -hmm. You know, that which I know better, I, and yet I, I did it anyway. Kind of seeing it, not judging yourself, and bouncing back. And what that, what that does is it creates a permanent shift in our mind so that we're less likely to do it again. You think forcing yourself to behave is what makes you not make mistakes again. Why, why am I doing the fifth time you know, marriage with certain kinds of people? Why, why did I marry my mother five times? Or my father 10 times? Why, how did that happen? They didn't look like them. It's, it's a vibe. It's a frequency. And you know, just drawn to that place. And it is not your destiny to keep doing that. So spirit is just going, how are you doing with that? 
Oh, I'm still doing it. <laughs> Spinning way over here, way over here. You know, and, and Spirit's like, okay, well, I'm here if you want help. Not asking for help, you keep spinning out. Learning to say, wow, isn't this funny? I mean, I know that I probably shouldn't hang out in bars, being that I'm in recovery for alcohol. You know, alcohol <laughs> might, you know, might not be the best place for me. Um, you know, and, and wow, I can see what I'm doing there. This is, this is a way of being like self-punishing. By getting in the program, which I thought was a great thing, and then hanging out in bars is actually causing me conflict which is not God, it's not peace. Now, because I have conflict, it's a frequency, and I'm going to attract problems in my life. Every contradiction, hypocrisy, every contradiction you have, everything that's incongruent is going to draw something to it to fix or match it, whichever. So if you're going to learn the hard way, see these incongruencies, spot them, and choose to let them draw you back to center. Oh, I get it, I, I see what that's about. Uh, I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to go into recovery and have my friends go, oh, they're a bummer now. They're not partying with us. I, I didn't want to be judged. Like You have all kinds of little things like this going on. See them, spot them, dismantle them, and bounce back. And it's true that some people are going to fall away to the wayside. Some, when you're changing your frequency, some are just not going to make the transition with you. You're going into recovery and that's it. Uh, some people, it's gonna be your own family members. It just, they start falling away. Now, if you're not okay with that, you're going to create some sort of frequency lessons and you won't like it because it's gonna be some sort of harsh, hardship. But if you know in advance your destiny is who you are and you're sincerely committed to knowing who you are, they do, will do it as they may and you're not reacting to it, you know? Still a bummer, you, you know, I have less friends. That's okay, I also have less turmoil. Let that be enough. There's a really strange controversial statement Jesus made once with a, an, an apostle that's, let's, uh, paraphrasing the story, but he's suffering from some particular thing, affliction. And he's saying, Jesus, can you help me fix this affliction? And Jesus' response was, let my peace be enough. And that's a very interesting thing, he didn't fix him. He said, focus on who you are. Let that be enough because that will shift whatever else you're struggling with and suffering from. Knowing who we are, uh, you, you would have heard Ananda when he was doing a song earlier. He was saying, think about a challenge while you're reciting this one statement. Do you remember that? See, so, which we did, I think, in, a, in one of our services recently. You're, you're usually looking at a world that seems to be attacking you. So you have to defend or get crushed. If you get crushed, you're a victim. If you defend, you become an aggressor of sorts. Neither of those is peace. So is there another alternative? Yes, there actually is. Can I hold my center, recite my mantra, my prayer, my affirmation? Can I hold my center and allow the things of this world to float within my vision and be dispersed? Because in the light of God, they don't exist. In the light of God, nothing has any power at all, except love. And we're learning that now. So what I'm talking about today is it's really partly saying, here's where we're going, guys. This is the direction we're all going. Within, within a generation, every one of us is going to have the ability to have some kind of an affliction and hold a state of consciousness to where the affliction comes into the state and dissipates. And the world will not change until you develop that ability. So we're thinking, I would really be centered and at peace if only the world were different. And we all have thought that or said that at least once. It's called if only, okay, which is a, an illness of the mind. There is, if only what? As soon as you start to fill in the blank, if only fill in the blank, you're wrong. Because there is no if only anything. You're the only power in your universe. You and us. You create your reality and we create ours and you're part of the ours, right? So it's coming to that time where people are gonna start realizing their power, not the one that's being hyped in let's say the new age world, uh, positive thinking world, which is better than nothing. 
But the real thing, the real power is I am versus I am not. There's the God I am and the ego I am not. And I've been living from my ego that I am not for a long time. But if I am the ego that I am not, all the things I created that were afflictions must not be because that's the ego I am not. So I was out of my mind. None of these things have real power. So the more I shift into the God I am, I'm holding this frequency that everything's okay. I don't mean as it is. I mean the light behind what seems to be. So we learned to a, a phrase I coined a long time ago, love the hell out of everything. We hold everything in this frequency, things enter it and it just dissipates. I think Star Trek has some sort of gadget like that where somebody's got a, a, a virus and when they teleport them, they can tell the teleporter to uh, uh, cleanse the viruses the person might be coming onto the ship with. It's just done. And it's like that. Holding this frequency, somebody comes in with a, a vibe of betrayal. Somebody hold, you know, and you can just command their wholeness. That's where we're going. Also, your own doubts and fears and shames and whatever surfaces in your life. Holding an absolute knowing. Guys, we're, we're all going to be there very soon. But don't wait for it to happen. Do it now. Because it can't happen until we're practicing this on a regular basis. I'm not saying that other stuff doesn't show up. There's days you're going to be better at it than others, but at least introduce the idea. It's up to me to hold space and dissipate things that have no real power. And there's going to be days when you're not in the mood to do that. And that's when you call on others to help you through prayer, perhaps. But the world cannot change but through us. You know, so it's, 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 it's now or never. It's like, I'm going to get on board. You want to wait around for the world to change or you want to be part of the change. You want to wait around for it to happen, you're actually prolonging the experience. So if you asked yourself, if I had 10 times in my life this week, this month, whatever, where I was drawn off center, how many times of those 10 did I hold presence, let it draw into my space, and dissipate. And most people would say zero out of 10. <laughs> do I expect you to do 10 out of 10? I don't expect anything. I'm just saying your ratio of happiness and peace, it will be determined on how well you did with that. So I would just ramp it up a little bit. I'm not going to you know, be a, a, a victim of the world I see. So there's these frequencies that I put out. I don't even know that I'm putting them out. And it draws things into my life but I'm going to take responsibility. Nothing happens by chance. It's impossible. It has to have been somewhere in my consciousness. So at the end of the day, we start to shift as I'm closing now. We start to, to fine tune and shift and say, wow, you can't do enough to create peace. A nation can't say, you will be peaceful now. A mom, dad, children, you'll be peaceful starting now. It's, it doesn't work that way. You can't do enough to make people more peaceful. You also can't defend peace well enough to keep it all the time. And that's why people give up because I try and do to create peace and it's not working or it doesn't last. That's why Buddha said, you know, the world is a place of suffering because even if you can pull things off, they don't last forever. So you end up bummed now or bummed later you know, his, his uh, happy gospel. Um, <laughs> the only way you can pull it off, create peace in yourself. All I can do is create peace by being peace. Again, doing won't do it. Being it is the trick. Being at peace. And I walk in innocence. That doesn't mean naive. I walk in innocence. That means I take responsibility. It means I don't judge you or myself. That's what it means to walk in innocence. And walking in innocence brings me to walking in peace. Walking in peace brings me to experiencing peace because what goes around comes around. If you find no anger in here, I'm not going to manifest that edge out here. 
It's, it, it, that's how it ultimately will come about. It is coming about. But people aren't totally there yet. It seems a bit foreign to imagine that concept. So we're going to go in in a moment to a brief meditation. But what I'd like in the meditation is an experience of feeling. No past, no future. Just the peace of God. And if you don't know what is the peace, how to get the peace of God, just ask Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, whatever wording you want to use. <sighs> Help me to feel your presence. And that presence is a very peaceful presence. And if you start to hear thoughts like, and I've got to remember to call so-and-so, that's not peace. Relax. So I close with that concept. Remember how Jesus, and for some reason people didn't see this. They, they didn't pick this up. When he walked in and walked out of a room, he always greeted people, peace be with you. And why? It was, it was really fashionable, trendy, peace. You know, why did he do that? He was affirming, no matter what you're going through, peace is here. Peace, not, I hope you feel peaceful tomorrow. Peace be with you now. Walk in peace now. Be at peace now. That's what he was doing. That was, he was ch changing the minds of people and readers 2,000 years later because they can hear that statement. Why when he was born, the angels sent a frequency they could hear around the planet, peace on earth and goodwill to mankind. Why, why the word peace? Because that's what happens when divinity is born. Amazing things happened in our stories of the birth of Ganesha or the birth of Buddha and so on. It's when holiness is born, the atoms, the atomic particles and waves throughout the universe bow and say, peace is present. And it was the birth of, of, of a person. Peace is here. Imagine that. Imagine being out working in the fields and suddenly this like vibe, this, this strange like uh, uh, sonic boom goes through you, in, around you, over you, and you hear these, peace be with you. Something uh, amazing is happening, right? And so that's you and I. When we're birthing the, the, the God within, when we're birthing the I am presence, when we're birthing the Christ within ourselves, the universe, even though we're not used to hearing it yet, the universe bows and says, thank God, peace to all. And they're hoping that we're going to be living that. Okay? Thank you. Let's do, let's do a few centering breaths. <clears throat> Inhaling, hear the words, I am. Exhaling, hear the word, relaxed. I am. Relaxed. Think about trials and tribulations, challenges, issues. Think about all that for a moment. All of those things have a frequency, a sound. Tune in to what sound they make. There's a vibe. Ugh. Breathe deeply while you're aware of all the stuff, dramas in life. And exhale when you're ready. Breathe in, aware of all that stuff of the world in your life, around you, past, future, current issues. Tune into it. Take a deep breath, thinking about it for a moment. Exhale. One more time. This time, when you exhale, let it make a sound on its way out. Inhale, aware of all this stuff. 
Good, good. The chant of fear, hurt, anger. One more time. In. Good. See, we didn't hold it in. We didn't protect it and hide it. We just let it flow in and out. Then it won't have the power that it once seemed to have. Now our cup is empty. What would we like to fill the cup with? And we get to choose. Peace, joy, love, safety. If you filled up with peace, joy, with every in-breath, and so it is on the out, out, on the out breath, your word, peace, joy, just take your time slowly, fill up with it. It's a frequency, it's a vibe. Hold that frequency and imagine there's no muscles that are holding, no tensions, no spine misalignments, because you're just so at peace, so in a state of wonderment, joy, expansiveness. <sighs> nice. But it has a sound, it has a vibration, it has a frequency. Please breathe into that now, deep breath, let it make a sound. In slowly, wow, peace, joy, oh, yeah, nice, it's calm, that sound, that's the sound people should hear when they meet you, instead of just the head talk, hi, my name is blah, 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 it's, they should hear this sound, this vibe, just being around you, they get this feeling, and you're allowed to have bad days, of course. But overall, am I getting more and more used to this, holding this kind of frequency? One more time, breathing into this frequency, this word, peace. Keep Breathe when you need to and then keep the sound going. Notice that the sound continues. It's all through the room and beyond. People all over the planet are joining us. Peace on earth, goodwill to mankind. Nothing else, nothing else here, nothing else matters. This vibe, this frequency.
surely the presence of God is here. that all that we shared musically and vibrationally and in the teachings and all that we're doing, I, I just pray that it all downloads and integrates well. Your request to talk about even things like accidents, nothing happening by chance. But be careful because there's that new agey thing that people have where they learn something new like nothing happens by chance and they go out there and misuse the statement. If you see somebody hurt, they've fallen down, you don't walk by and go, oh, that's a frequency thing. Michael said, you must have been off today. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how you change things. That's not how you tear up old contracts, karmic contracts, love, compassion, grace. You, you help the people. If they knew their value, they may not have, just may not have fallen. When you gave them their value by helping them up, you canceled that statement out. So our goodness can change everything. It's not by walking around more platitudes. That's the last thing we need in this world. 
So thank you, and some of your other, you know, joy and so off, uh, so uh, so on, so on. Um, I didn't get to the poetry part, but that's the way it goes. One of you, <laughs> one of you asked about poetry, um, but thank you, and I want you to remember, please, there are innocent beings and there's innocent victims. You get to choose which one you want to be. I'm an innocent being who walks in peace, peace or I'm an innocent victim who doesn't have peace because of what you've done to me. You decide which one feels most congruent to your desire. So God bless. Please stand for our closing. First, centering in gratitude. This place, this space, the message, the sacred reading, our service assistant, our sacred reader, our volunteers, our chaplains, everyone involved here, employees. It's just amazing. Tune into gratitude. The world is changing. There's a lot of places you could be. You could be watching part of the problem. You could be out there attending part of the problem. Or you could be here changing consciousness and being part of the solution. So God bless you and thank you for making that healthy choice. Even online and even if you watch this five years from now. The light of God surrounds us. We love the, light of God. the love of God enfolds us. We love the, love of God. the power of God protects us. We love the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We love the presence of God. Wherever we go, God, God is, is, I am, we are, and so it is. Thank you so much.